I mean, I'm going to start off with uh, asking you, commiserations or congratulations? Commiserations because nobody likes to be downgraded. Congratulations because when Karachi was previously, or the KSC was a, a, a frontier market, it did very, very well. Uh, thank you so much, and, and thank you for uh, having me on your uh, program. Um, and uh, you're, you're absolutely right. And, and to put it in perspective, uh, the, the downgrade, as you mentioned, has happened uh, because of size issues, um, but not uh, what the M MSCI also emphasized was that we continue to meet all the regulatory <coughs> and market access requirements <coughs> Excuse me, uh, for an emerging market. Um, so I, I think uh, that is important to, to understand, and we will see you know, how this uh, plays out. Um, the, what I think, uh, to put it in context, um, if you look at the long-term performance of the market, because that is what fund managers are, are interested in in the end, the market opened to foreign investors back in 1991, and over the long term, the Pakistan market in dollar terms has vastly outperformed, if you look at, say, over the last 10 years, the MSCI Emerging Market Index, you know, by 2-3%. By and, you know, most fund managers would give an arm and a leg for that kind of outperformance. And if you look at the valuations right now in the Pakistan market, um, you know, the price earning ratio for the market, KSC 100 index is around six times. Uh, the dividend yield is over 5%, so lowest P's in the region, highest dividend yield, and the discount to the MSCI frontier and emerging markets, which used to average over the last 10 years about, you know, between 25 to 35%, is up to 60%. And if you look at the profitability growth of the companies, this year the companies that have reported in the KSC 100 index, there has been a profitability growth of between... 60 to 70 percent compared to 2020 and 2019. So even if you go pre-pandemic, so uh, you know Farouk? strong economic fundamentals. Uh, Farouk, I mean, how much that doesn't really reflect the economy, which is uh, teetering. But uh, give me a sense about the other positives. We're seeing a lot of money going into startups, into uh, some of these uh, uh, technology companies as well. Uh, how is the IPO pipeline? now given that so um i'd like to address both the points in in terms of the macro economy yes like like the rest of the world the the pakistan's economy has also been hit by the pandemic uh, but if you look at our comparative performance in the region uh, it has come out relatively better and, and quite uh, strongly and particularly our large-scale manufacturing um, and other industries have come out extremely strongly with, you know, record export, uh, export numbers. Uh, in terms of the IPOs, um, you know, we've had a string of good IPOs that have come out in the last 12 months. And yes, we do have a full pipeline. I mean, just this, uh, in the last sort of three weeks, we've had, uh, you know, three IPOs. And there's one that's coming out, uh, you know, just in the next few days. And it's, it's a tech-focused IPO. Um, and the point that you mentioned about the ecosystem and, and the money flowing in into the Pakistan startup uh, companies, um, it, it, it's seen a quantum leap. Um, I mean, we've, we've, had, we've had over a quarter of a billion dollars that's come in in the last few months in startups in Pakistan, um, you know, which is more than the last two, three years combined. And we're continuing to see, you know, very strong interest in that. And the exchange PSX in response has recently launched a gem market, a growth enterprise market, to allow both growth capital for smaller companies as well as allow exits to you know, early stage investors. Um, and we are seeing, uh, we are processing the first IPOs in that right, right now. Uh, Farooq, you sound optimistic, but foreign investors are not buying into that story because a billion dollars have already made an exit since 2017, regardless of whether valuations are low or not, whether dividends are high or not, or attractive or not, they're not coming in. How do you reverse that? You're absolutely right. And both the uh, uh, you know, Securities and Exchange Commission of Pakistan and PSX, we've continued to uh, you know, work in the reform process in Pakistan. We are at the moment implementing a uh, state-of-the-art uh, trading and surveillance system that we bought from the Shenzhen Stock Exchange. 
that will take our trading and surveillance capability you know, well into the 21st century. Um, and you know, I believe you know, we, we will continue to do our work. I think the valuations coupled with profitability growth is compelling in Pakistan. The regulatory structure, the disclosure requirements, corporate governance is up to international standards, absolutely. And we've had, uh, you know, as, as you mentioned, a billion dollars worth of sales coming through from foreign investors. I think what is extremely encouraging and positive is that all of that selling has been absorbed. And last year, the market was up, even in dollar terms, almost about, you know, if you look at the last fiscal year, it was up almost about over 40 percent, even in dollar terms, because the rupee also appreciated. Um, and I believe, you know, the Pakistan story, you know, will, will uh, you know, find its place uh, in the global, you know, investment environment. But as I said, what is very encouraging is that there is significant domestic liquidity. Um, you know, other investors have come up and, and snapped up those bargains, which, um, uh, you know, foreign investors have sold. Um, and in the market, despite this selling, has continued to grow uh, and, and go up as opposed to in previous years, uh, you know, where it have caused tremendous pressure in the market. Right. Farouk, you talk about liquidity, but we have the IMF urging Pakistan to pull back on stimulus at a time when the prime minister is trying to ramp up growth. I mean, how do you see this playing out? Look, I think I think it is a uh, difficult situation. Uh, I, I think the government has done extremely well in the last year and a half in in uh, tackling the economic fallout uh, from the pandemic, and not just in terms of economic stimulus, but also in terms of the social security network that they have provided to the to the most uh, uh, you know vulnerable segments of the society, uh, and that's been lauded you know internationally. Uh, you know how how that's been done. Um, so it is a difficult act. I believe, um, you know, I mean, negotiations and discussions continue with the IMF. Um, uh, you know, it is my own personal view uh, that, that I, you know, uh, well, the government is committed to uh, continuing with the IMF program. And it is my personal view uh, that there will be a, uh, you know, a meeting of uh, minds between the government and the IMF of how to balance uh, you know, withdrawing liquidity while at a time where the economy still needs uh, stimulus. For a, a final question, for me at least, uh, the, the government did launch these Roshan digital uh, accounts for overseas Pakistanis. It, it, okay, that's still relatively in its nascency. How is that program going? That's been a huge success uh, for Pakistan overall. We've had over $2 billion that, have, that has flown in, and, it, and it's really been, been a seminal uh, event. Uh, to, to allow just such digital, seamless uh, ability for overseas Pakistanis anywhere in, in the world to be able to open accounts, uh, you know, sitting at home or in their offices, uh, you know, in, in uh, Pakistan, and then be able to do a wide range of services, which includes being able to, you know, buy stocks. So the money that has flown in into the stock market has been relatively small out of those $2 billion plus that's come into uh, RDAs from overseas Pakistanis. But you know, it's for the first time in, in, in our uh, financial sector uh, that banks and brokers are sharing information, KYC, et cetera, so that it's a seamless experience for their customers. Uh, and now that you know, we've built the access, uh, I, I think in the medium term, that will lead to a uh, you know, significant inflow into the capital markets as well, <clears throat> just like we have seen in the, in the banking sector of you know, over $2 billion so far. And that's just been like eight, nine months. So it's, it's been a huge step forward. 